ocean or the lake, it's actually developing inside of a fluid-filled sac. And then, that was the amniotic egg. Then we looked, last class meeting, on page, just to remind you, <clears throat> yeah, page R32, and on R32, so here, again, on your left is the little amniotic egg, right, with the reptile or the chick, surrounded by the amniotic sac, with the yolk sac for nourishment and the allotoic sac for waste. And so re represented by the thick black line is the outer chorionic sac. Then we compared that and we showed you what exists in mammals, including us. Here's what it is. The human baby and the piggy develop in a fluid-filled amniotic sac, just like in the chicken. <clears throat> Here is the, represented by the thick black line, is the outer chorionic sac. Can everybody see there's an inner and an outer sac? The inner sac's called the amniotic sac, the outer sac's called the chorionic sac. And on this side of the chorionic sac, it develops these finger-like extensions called chorionic villi. And we learned that there's an umbilical cord that goes from the baby to those chorionic villi. Inside the umbilical cord is a collapsed yolk sac that, as far as we're concerned, has no function, and a collapsed allantolic sac inside the umbilical cord that, as far as we're concerned, has no function. Because the baby, the human baby, doesn't get its nourishment from a yolk, and it doesn't store its waste in an allantoic sac. Instead, there are umbilical blood vessels, right? Two umbilical veins, one umbilical artery. They are going through the umbilical cord, and they project into these chorionic villi. The chorionic villi, and they're called chorionic because they're part of the chorionic sac, form the fetal portion, the baby's part of the placenta. And then there are blood vessels of the mother that are growing in the endometria of the uterus. Didn't we learn that the hormone progesterone promotes the growth of blood vessels of the mother in the endometrium? So blood vessels of the mother are here. That's the maternal part, the mother's part of the placenta. So how does the ba human baby get its nourishment? Not from a yolk sac. It gets it from the mother's bloodstream. Now, these blood vessels of the baby and the mother do not connect, but they come close to one another, and it relies on diffusion. So oxygen and nutrients diffuse or flow out of the mother's bloodstream into the baby's, and carbon dioxide and waste diffuse out of the baby's bloodstream into the mother's. So that's the placenta, and so where we're at right now on U4, so U4 shows what definitely looks like a pregnant woman, and here, there's actually the baby, this is almost full term, uh, developing inside an inner amniotic and an outer chorionic sac. Here's the chorionic villi right here, it says that. This is the placenta area. And incidentally, this is the uterus or womb, and this is the vagina or vaginal canal. So these sacs, at the time of birth, rupture, and there's fluid that comes out, amniotic fluid, and then this baby is going to, the uh, uterus is going to contract to push this baby out of the uterus and out the vaginal canal, the birth canal. Actually, contractions of the uterus, which is actually caused by a hormone called oxytocin. So, uh, people who have me for lecture need to know for lecture. So, uh, and of course, when we say that the baby's got to come out through the vaginal canal, we're asking who the hell designed this? Yeah. But anyhow. Um, so that's on U4. Let's take a look at...